Hello, everybody, and welcome to Insurance Runs, presented by our good friends at State Farm, right here on OpenSports.com. I'm your host, Sid Rosenberg, and today we're joined by Kevin Kaduck, editor of the Big League Stew Baseball blog at Yahoo Sports. Kevin, is that the Honky Tonk Man? That is. That is uh, the Honky Tonk Man. I met him down at uh, Milwaukee Brewers Spring Training Camp in 2008, and he is uh, quite an impressive guy, as, as you might think. One of my all-time favorites. Well, Kevin, of course, is a Chicago guy. As you know, Kevin, I'm down in Miami here with Open Sports, but I'm a New York guy at heart. Spent most of my life in New York. Which has the better interleague rivalry? The Cubbies? Cubbies right now, 21 and 22. Five back in the NL Central. And the White Sox, 20 and 24. Five and a half back in the AL Central. Or, of course, the Mets and the Yankees. I'm going to go. With, I'm a Chicago guy. I'm going with White Sox, Cubs. I think there's more animosity between the two sides, north side, south side than there are on Mets-Yankees. Uh, I don't know if you would ag agree with this or not. Because, um, it doesn't seem like it's that big of a deal to be a fan of one or the other in uh, New York. In Chicago, and we have houses literally divided between Cubs and White Sox. It is it kind of a do-or-die thing here. And, and, you know, before the White Sox won the World Series, that was the World Series for both teams. And I still think now that, you know, the White Sox are still kind of the kind of the, the younger brother, even though they do have that title, they still really get up for, the, for that series. So I'm going to go with Chicago. Spoken like a true Chicago guy. I maintain this, okay? First of all, uh, I'm going to uh, disagree. It's ridiculous. There's nothing like the New York <laughs> baseball teams. But you know what it comes down to, Kev, is every place outside of New York, whether it's Boston or Chicago, even here in Miami, all these great little cities all across America have penis envy for New York. And, and as big as the White Sox Cub thing is, Mets and Yankees, houses divided, Yankees 26 World Championships. A Met, the Mets really come, uh, come about because of the rich tradition of the New York Giants and Brooklyn Dodgers. So in the end, I'm going to wholeheartedly disagree. The Cubs and White Sox, nothing like the Mets and Yankees. I think we both agree that those are by far the top two rivals. I don't think anything comes close to Chicago and New York. And there's you know, great moments in both. Uh, you know, Chicago has the A.J. Brzezinski, Michael Barrett fight. New York has the Roger Clemens, Mike Piazza tussle from, you know, a couple years back. Uh, but I'm, I'm still going to go with Chicago. I think, you know, when it, when it comes down to it, we, you know, go back and forth with each other more, more than New Yorkers do. And I will add this. The Yankees fight against, you know, have everybody coming at them. The Red Sox, the Mets, the White Sox, any team that comes in to play the Yankees, you know, that's a big rivalry for them. Uh, you know, so the Yankees kind of have to take – take everyone on. White Sox and Cubs, it's it, just against them. And the Cubs haven't been good, though, for so long. I mean, like, I mean, I mean winning championships <laughs> here. I mean, you don't got to go to the Yankees and the Mets. You go back to the 50s and the 40s, going back to the 20s with the Giants and the Yankees. For 80, 90 years, New York baseball teams have gone head-to-head -head in World Series, and it goes way back before the Mets came into play in 1962. But with that said here, Kevin, who do you root for more? Are you a Cub fan, a, Red so or a, a White Sox fan? You like them both about the same? You like Pinello more than Guillen? What's your deal there? <laughs> See, that's actually where I differ from everybody. I grew up, uh, I, I, I grew up in the south suburbs when I was early, so you know, my dad took me to Sox games. Then I moved to the north suburbs, and when I was kind of a teenager, I ended up going up to Wrigley Field. I love baseball. I think you can tell that on Big League Stew. So I kind of, you know, I, I watch both, and I, I pull for both. When it comes down to it, I wrote the book Wrigley World. I uh, spent every day out at uh, Wrigley Field in 2005. So when they do meet up, I'm going for the Cubs. All right, good answer. Now, Kevin, uh, if Chicago is such a good baseball town, explain this to me. I watched Jake Peavy pitch a great game for San Diego a couple of nights ago. Before the season started, he was rumored to be heading to Wrigley Field. Just last week, there was a trade in place to go to the White Sox. He's not a Cub or a White Sox. If Chicago is such a great baseball town, why does Jake Peavy want nothing to do with it? Well, he wants to go to the Cubs. That's why he turned down the White Sox. The Cubs right now are in a problem where they're being sold, and they have absolutely nowhere to add that $60 million. I mean, you've got the Ricketts family trying to put together this deal to buy the Cubs, and they don't have enough cash. They can't get people to – they can't get enough banks to loan them their money. So they're going out to – Jim Belushi and uh, Bill Murray trying to rile rail, rail the cash. And right now you're looking at a position where Jake Peavy has almost as much leverage as any baseball player has ever had. And so he's basically saying, I want to pitch in the National League. I want to pitch for a contender. 
And we looked at the White Sox. The White Sox really are not in a position to, to do, make any noise this year. Uh, could they, you know, with, with Jake Peavy, maybe eke out an AL Central title? Sure, I could see that. But I don't think once they got to the playoffs, they, ha- they have the horses to do it. And so I think Peavy's right now in a position where he's going to win. I mean, you could almost argue that he always has too much leverage because he's almost maybe looking for the perfect woman that does not exist. And so, you know, will the Cubs free up salary? Will they be able to give the green light to bring up, you know, board sixty millions on PV? I guess we'll see. But PV might be sitting there for a while in San Diego. All right, let me ask you this: the Kansas City Royals have played such good baseball early on. Now they're kind of falling back to the Tigers, mm-hmm. and much of the reason for their early success was the pitching. Bannister's been good, but Zach Greinke has been great. Seven and one right now, Kevin. Zero point eight two ERA. This after dealing with social anxiety. Disorder. I mean, how much better could this guy be if he didn't have social anxiety disorder? And how much anxiety could you have when you're going home to Miss Daytona Beach every single night? I, I tell you, man, Zach Greinke is one of the best baseball stories that we have seen in a long time because, you know, knowing that what he dealt with and, and, you know, when you've got problems up there in your mind, those are not easy to overcome. So when you overcome something like that, I mean, it looked like he was on his way out of baseball in 2006. Now he's back. He looks like Pedro Martinez in 1999 or 2000. It's just such a great baseball story. And the one thing I'm very happy about is that it's happening in, happening in a place like Kansas City, which has been, you know, starved for a great baseball story over the past decade. I mean, these, these fans have been, you know, uh, consistently downtrodden upon and trampled over. And for them to be able to go see a guy like Granky Pitch every five days, I think is just amazing. And I'm really grateful for a thing like extra innings where you, know, you can tune in every night, no matter where you are in the country, to, to be able to watch it. I mean, he is that good this year. Yeah, the Royals, uh, people forget. You know, I talk to Yankee fans. They talk about that Yankee-Red Sox rivalry. They forget about those great games of the late 1970s, those George Brett Royal teams, the Chris Chambliss home run off Mark Liddell. Yep. There was a time when Kansas City was a real good baseball organization, but it's been quite some time since. Okay, with the exception here, Kevin, of the NL West, every division so far wide open. Lots of these divisions have three, four team races, which is very exciting. The NL West, the Dodgers running away with it, seven and a half up on San Diego, despite the fact the Padres have won 10 in a row. Give me your opinion of the most exciting race as we get closer to the All-Star break. Well, I still think it's going to be the AL East because, you know, we walked in and we thought it was going to be a three-team race between the Rays, the Red Sox, and the Yankees. And what we actually have is a four-team race. The Rays are still around 500, but I really think that they're going to climb back in. And I think we're going to have a, a, a fight the whole way through. I don't think the, the Blue Jays were as good as they were in their start were, or the was, but I also don't think they're, they're as bad as they have been over this, this uh, eight- or nine-game losing streak. So I, I'm really looking forward to following the AL East especially if the Yankees are doing as well. They've won 9-11. and 11. Uh, the, the Red Sox have Euclid and Pedroia back. So I'm looking forward to that AL East. I'm also interested to see what happens with the AL Central because really I don't think any team has a lock on that, and I think we're going to go up and down uh, a lot more times before, uh, before it's all said and done. And, and that AL West race is great, too, with uh, the Texas Rangers getting some good pitching that they haven't had before and uh, opening up the lead on the Angels. I agree. The ALE, so is a division to keep an eye on, especially with A-Rod back going 5-for-5 five five against the Rangers yesterday. Teixeira playing a lot better in the Yankees, like you said, Kevin, playing some great baseball. You can catch Kevin's work at Big League Stew at Yahoo.com. You can also follow our good friend Kevin on Twitter at Twitter.com slash Big League Stew. Kevin, fantastic job. Thank you so much for hopping on today. Enjoy the baseball. All right. Thanks, Sid. Take care. That's going to do it for this edition of Insurance Runs, brought to you by our good friends at State Farm. Make sure you come by on Wednesday for Fantasy Whiplash with special guest Paul Bordetti of RotoExperts.com. For now, I'm Sid Rosenberg here at Open Sports, and we'll see you next time. The future of sports on the web is open.